Today we're making a cake with a pond and cattails to go with the dragonfly cake topper I made in my last video. Hi friends, my name is Sherry Ray. Welcome to Every Cake Tells a Story. My goal is to help you build skills, gain confidence, and love others through cake art. Today we'll be dedicating this cake to three incredible young women, Katie, Sophia, and Nadine. You'll have to stick around to hear their story. We'll be making them this cattails cake, which is really simple to make and really elevates a nature cake. Okay, let's go spread some love like icing. I started by leveling the cake, kind of. I leveled one of the square layers and the round one. Then I leveled part of the top square cake for the round pond to sit on. But I left the rest all bumpy and hilly as the land would be. I know scientifically it doesn't work for the pond to be higher than the land, but I went there artistically because I didn't want the dragonfly cake topper to get lost in the cattails. I added some icing between the layers and finished stacking it. Then gave it a quick thin crumb coat to lock in those crumbs so they wouldn't attack the top layer of the icing. I wanted to ice my cake quickly, so I popped some icing in a bag with a petal tip and dropped it in place. I used an offset spatula to spread it. Then went back over it to carefully smooth it out. I like to work from the edges in to get that nice clean look. On to the sides. I bought this tip a couple years ago, but this is the first time I used it. I love it. It was so quick and easy. I just had to smooth it out from here. It took a little bit of work around the curves, but I didn't need it perfect. It is the ground after all. But I gotta add some texture. I wanted the cake to be marshy with a water and grass blend. So once I finished the green, I added some blue streaks and just kind of blended them in. I went back and forth with my spatula to get the color blend I was happy with. Then I was finally ready to smooth it out for good. So I took a bench scraper and went around the cake. I didn't need to go for perfection here either. It's still the ground and I'm gonna be covering it with a lot of cattails. I was done with most of the prep work at this point, so I took some bench scrapers and moved it to my platter. It looks so cool already. I added some tufts of grass with my tip number 233 by squeezing my piping bag and pulling straight up. I stopped squeezing and quickly pulled away. Voila, grass. Then I was finally ready to start making some cattail leaves. I added tylose powder to the leaves to help them harden up and hold their shape. A good rule of thumb is to add about one to two teaspoons per 500 grams of fondant. Then I just kneaded the fondant to work it in. I did that to two shades of green. Then combined some of the dark green into the light and mixed it up to give it some more texture, texture, texture. Make sure you stop before mixing them together completely though. I need to tell you about the amazing young women this cake is dedicated to. While I do that, I'll continue to work on these leaves. Here's what I did. I sprinkled some icing sugar down and rolled it out. I cut them out by running my pizza cutter over and over them. And textured them up as I went along by twisting and bending them and then setting them aside to dry. At one point, I said, not enough texture. So I dusted on several colors of petal dust before cutting them to really make them pop. Okay, let's go get to know these ladies. Individuals who have a sibling with special needs simply love their sibling. They've never known anything differently. Let me explain how Katie, Sophia, and Nadine love their brother Jared and how they express it so beautifully. Katie is the teacher. She's always trying to help Jared learn new things. When she was about six, she noticed Jared was only using his right hand to play. She mentioned it to mom and found out that was actually something Jared was working on during physical therapy. Without being asked, she walked him through using his left hand by putting a ball in it and holding his right hand. She independently identified a problem and wanted to help Jared solve it. This isn't isolated to six-year-old Katie either. She's still always trying to help teach him and help him become more independent. Sophia is patient and thoughtful and is always trying to figure out what could be better for Jared. She had the opportunity to help at a camp one year for children with autism. She learned a ton from the lessons that were taught, playing with children on the spectrum, and watching the camp counselors. She came home with a binder of information and a boatload of wisdom. 
One example of this is how she would prepare in advance if she knew there was a situation which might upset Jared and he would start banging his head. She started bringing a pillow to help protect him. Another example, she raised a couple thousand dollars to donate to a center which Jared attended for therapy. Sophia quietly and patiently cares for her brother. Nadine is playful and has always figured out how to make things fun. Jared would give high fives a bit and it was a neat way to help him interact. But one day mom went to give him a high five and instead he gave her a fist bump. It turned out that Nadine had taken it upon herself to teach him how to fist bump. It didn't take too long and he's a fist bumper now. Most recently, she took over Jared's entire playroom and turned it into this deluxe, amazing fort. She completed it with fairy lights and Jared loved it. Nadine enjoys playing with Jared. These young women love their brother in their own unique ways and these are just a few examples of how they do it. However, we need to get back to that cake. I debated what to make the cattails out of, but decided to use wire. I could have used dried spaghetti, but I was nervous about working on all of them and then breaking the spaghetti as I went along. I had to prep a lot of wire. The cattails were really easy. I rolled out some brown fondant into a long snake, cut it into lots of little pieces, and then slid it onto the wire. I was talking to a friend about this cattails cake and she said, oh, you must mean bulrushes. That's what they're called here. So I had to look it up. What else are they called? Reeds, punks, rapo, kumbungee, and my favorite, reed mace. Next time I visit my dad, I'm gonna say, hey dad, you got any reed mace growing out back? And I'll see what he says. <laughs> he might know though, so actually maybe I need to say rapo. I had to add a dab of water to the top and bottom to glue it and pinch it in place so it wouldn't slide down the wire. It was finally time to roll the bull rushes in cocoa powder to give them that soft, fuzzy look. This is the perfect time for one more story though. These are the steps I did during the story. It was time to start sliding the pieces in. I made the leaves longer than I needed so I could just push them into the cake. The extra long ones needed to be cut to size and the bottoms leveled out because they wrapped around the sides. I just pushed them against the icing and it held them in place. Okay, let's multitask. Jake and Catherine were always straddling this balance of including everyone and yet giving their typically developing kids the experiences they needed without being held back because Jared simply couldn't participate in the same way. Whenever the girls' school would be canceled, but Jared's would still be in session, they would intentionally focus on Katie, Sophia, and Nadine. They went to amusement parks, museums, and all kinds of activities. This also came into play when Jake and Catherine brought the girls on vacation to Peru. It was a month of respite, a short period of rest. Jake and Catherine were able to be fully present with the girls while they enjoyed meals together, went sightseeing, and spent time with extended family. They toured Lima, spent the weekend in the mountains, and saw some natural hot springs. Katie, Sophia, and Nadine even tried surfing for the first time. This balance is hard. It's really hard. But respite is important for all six of the family members. All right, not as fun as Peru, but we had our little break. <laughs> Let's go finish the cake. One last look. Yep, it's good. I added a few more clusters of grass sporadically around the border. Then it was time to finish this cake off with the dragonfly cake topper I made in my last video. I just slid it in place. Let's take a look at how this turned out. Are you enjoying this video? Then hit that like button to help me out and to show some love to Katie, Sophia, and Nadine. When I asked Catherine who she wanted to dedicate a cake to, her girls came to mind. She said, they give so much and they need to be recognized. They've had to mature faster, but as they grow into adulthood, it's going to serve them well. It's also a nod to siblings who have different childhoods. Katie, Sophia, and Nadine, this cake is dedicated to you. The Dragonfly Cake Topper was dedicated to Jake, Catherine, and Jared. And if you happen to miss that video, click right here and I'll see you over there. Bye friends!